Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast where we talk all about interiors with interviews with interior stylists, writers and the fabulous homeware brands that make a house a home. I also catch up with industry experts in the know and get them to share all their knowledge and advice. There's so much to talk about. I'm your host Emma Morton Turner, an interior stylist and writer with a ton of experience. I set up InsideStylist.com so I can share all that interiors love with you. So don't forget to head on over to the website for not only the show notes from today's episode, but regular interior blog posts and a whole host of inspiration on the interior stylists and writers profiles. But for now, enjoy the show. Hello, today I'm going to be sharing some quotes that I live by to help with my interior styling and business side of my life. The money side of things is from work, but it crosses over into your personal life. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share eight quotes that I live by and where I found them because you might want to go uh, go on and listen to the podcasts that I found them from or you might want to read the books or watch the YouTube video. So the first one um, and the reason or the inspiration for this whole episode is because I found a new podcast. I follow Kate Erickson's podcast which is called Kate's Take and she is the partner of John Lee Dumas who has a very big podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire and I've been listening to Entrepreneur on Fire for many years. I mean I'm sitting in my loft recording this and I remember when I found his podcast I painted my whole loft while listening to his podcast back to back and that was about five years ago. Um, And Kate has her own um, podcast which I've gone back to very nearly the beginning from her series one, which was in 2016. And she's talking all about goal setting because where I am right now, we've got another week and a half of the school holidays. And going back to work after the school holidays when it's been very disruptive, apart from the fact that having kids at home is quite um, a juggling act, there's also the fact that everybody seems to be on holiday. People aren't coming back to emails, trying to organise things takes a lot longer. And it's like a refresh, a restart almost. You kind of rethink your goals. Right, coming into the end of the year, what do I want to do before Christmas? And I just randomly came across one of her posts on Facebook and thought, oh, I've never checked her podcast out. And the and what she said in the podcast I was listening to the other day was, plan your tomorrow today. And I thought that was absolutely genius. And it's something that I always say I'm going to do, but then never really do. And the way she told the story was that her sister sent her a text and said, how's your day going? And she said, nah, it's not great. I'm not really getting on with anything. I can't get motivated. I don't know what's what. If you listen to Kate or John's podcast, you'll know that they are machines. They they are so productive. So to hear her say that she wasn't having a good day and she knew the reason why, it was like, okay, I felt like that the day I was listening to it. And she said it was because she hadn't organized what she needed to do what was her biggest priority for that day and this is something I've been trying to do quite a lot so what Kate says she does is 15 minutes before she finishes her work day she writes down the top things she needs to do the first priority the one and only thing she has to get done and then everything else that would be nice to get done so I have transferred this into my world which is slightly different I have an alarm this sounds terrible but I have an alarm that goes off at 9 20 that reminds me to go and say goodnight to my daughters because they do you know they're teenagers they do go off on their own and go to bed and every now and again I'll be writing show notes or doing a blog post and I'll realize it's 10 o'clock and they're asleep and I haven't said goodnight so I set an alarm for 9 20 just to remind me that it's 9 20 And I go and say goodnight to my girls. But that is also my reminder to get ready for the next day. So plan out what I'm doing the next day, what I'm wearing, what I need to take and what time I need to leave. So I'm planning my tomorrow today. So that's quote number one. The second quote is one that I've heard for many years. And that is, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And that's by Henry Ford. It's so true. The time I first noticed that this was really right was when I used to have tennis lessons. I don't think there's many things that in my life that it has been more true that if I think I'm not going to hit the ball over the net, I would not hit it over the net. If I think I will hit it over the net, I do hit it over the net. So I try and instill this to my kids quite a lot. But it's that whole thing of when you get asked to do a job and it's a little bit outside your comfort zone, you just have to go for it sometimes and you have to think, yeah, I can do that. And then just work it out afterwards. Because I think half the time you do know what you're doing. Or you figure it out. Or you ask someone who has done it before you. And get advice. That's what everyone's there for. That's what this little inside stylist community is all about. 
but I, I really truly believe that the more positive you think about things and the better your mind is framed, the better the outcome will be. Number three is a Jim Rowan quote, and he was a motivational speaker. And this quote is used all the time. And I have probably talked about it a number of times on this podcast as well. And that is, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So I, I can't remember if I've given much detail in the past, but the, as the saying goes, if you spend most of your time with five overweight people, you will be the sixth. If you spend your time with five heavy drinkers, you'll be the sixth alcoholic. If you spend your time with five millionaires, you get where I'm going with this. And with work, this is very much about who you spend your time with. If you spend your time with naysayers and, oh, magazines are going down the pan and it's never going to work and, oh, the industry's in decline, you're going to feel like that is how it is. But if you spend your time with people who say, yeah, there's not as much editorial work, but the commercial work is picking up because people want to do more social media shoots and there's other avenues and there's lots of other things I can do. You're surrounding yourself with people who are positive thinking, they're action takers, they're the ones who are making things happen and not just sitting around feeling sorry for themselves or stressing about what might happen. They're getting off their butts and doing something about it. And the the place that I I experienced this most out, was outside of work. I had a, I'll say, toxic friend in inverted commas and I decided that every time I was with her she left me feeling absolutely flat and deflated and um, she would put me down and it was just her personality I'd been friends with her for many years but you get used to people and you don't even realize it's happening and they kind of came to a it came to a point came to a head and I decided that actually I didn't need this in my life and I decided to cut her out of my life and I literally said I am the sum of the five people I spend the most time with. I want to spend time with people who leave me feeling uplifted and positive and motivated. And that is probably one of the most transformative quotes of my life. I cannot tell you how much happier I am choosing who I spend my time with and the people who I spend my most time with. And it doesn't have to be people you're physically with. I count people who I interact with online, people whose podcasts I listen to because they're in my ear. I'm listening to their positive talk. I'm listening to their motivation. I'm listening to their experiences and how they've learned and moved forward. And that encourages you to move forward too. So the five people you spend the most time with aren't always real life people. It's nice if some are, but you know what I mean. The fourth quote is, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. Now, the first time I heard this, going back to the first um, the first quote, I heard this by John Lee Dumas. He would always say, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. Um, this quote is by um, a guy called Derek Sivers, and um, it's from a book he wrote called Anything You Want. And it's all about being overcommitted. So if I just read this paragraph from his book, he says, use this rule if you're often overcommitted or too scattered. If you're not saying hell yeah about something, say no. When deciding whether to do something, if you feel anything less than wow, that would be amazing, absolutely hell yeah, then say no. When you say no to most things, you leave room in your life to really throw yourself completely into that thing. That thing that makes you say hell yeah. Every event you get invited to, every request to start a new project, if you're not saying hell yeah about it, say no. So we're all really busy. We all take on way too much. And saying yes to less is the way out of this. And an example of this in work is if you take on a job because you've got nothing lined up and you think, well, I really need this money. I'm just going to take on this job, even though I really don't want to do it. And then nine times out of 10, you know what will happen. A fantastic job will come up that you now can't do because you've said yes to the thing you should have said no to because it wasn't a hell yeah. Um, So I actually found a, um, I'll have to take a picture of it. I found a picture at a boot sale when I was doing my treasure hunting and it just said, hell yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to have that. And I've literally, I hung it up on my wall with ribbon just so I could get it up straight away. Um, It's just, it reminds you that you need to stay focused on what your goals are. What is it you want? Don't say yes to the things that don't get you excited that aren't going to be making you inspired and push you to do your best because working for money I mean we all work for money but working just for the money 
is quite disheartening and it's oh I hate that when you take on a job that you don't really want to do and something else comes up but the trying to get that work done or that shoot done or whatever it just makes it so difficult it's horrible so don't don't go there people try and avoid it okay number six this one's a little bit off the cuff this is my um my current obsession this there's two quotes in this this is by Dave Ramsey He has a podcast all about money. Now, I have talked about him quite a lot on my Instagram feed. I don't know if I've mentioned him in the podcast before. He is an evangelical Christian, went bankrupt um, at something like 26 years old. And then literally he had a very young family, He had no money, he was broke and he had to relearn how to do money. And he had millions when he went broke and very young. Uh, He just took very like crazy risks and then he learned what to do and then started teaching other people through his church how to um, get on top of their money. And then he taught more and then he taught other people how to teach it. And it's become this massive um, industry. And he's now a multi, multi millionaire. And he does a podcast every day in America and it's three hours long. And I listen to his podcast most days because I find it quite, um, quite inspiring and keeps me on track. I use his baby steps. So What he says time and time again is beans and rice, rice and beans. And I say it all the time. Either I say, like when I'm talking to my husband about purchases and stuff, I say, I've got my Dave head on. I am beans and rice, rice and beans. And by that, he means if you are getting out of debt, which is what the majority of his program is all about, you need to be on beans and rice. You need to not be going out. He says, don't go out to dinner unless you're working. You're not allowed in a restaurant unless you're working in it. And um, and it's all about being focused about what you want the, with the end game in mind. And the reason, this, oh, actually, the other thing he says is I've got two quotes from him. The beans and rice, rice and beans is all about staying focused on not just spending for the sake of it. You need to really buckle down, be on a budget and only spend what you have. The beans and rice, rice and beans is all about only spending the money that you have allocated for different things. So only spend on food, on um, what you need to shop. Like, for example, I have to allocate a certain amount for my my boot sale obsession. Otherwise, I would spend hundreds every month and my house would be full of crap. I mean, props. But the other quote that he says is, I've had it. He says, you get to a point where you say, I've had it. I've had it with debt. I've had it with credit cards. And I reached a I've had it moment. I didn't want credit cards anymore. I use credit cards only for work. But I do have credit card debt from like a business side of things, from building Inside Stylist, from paying for the website to be built and the running of it. And I hate that. I hate being in debt. So I keep his beans and rice, rice and beans in my head. So I don't just go shopping for the hell of it. I don't buy frivolous things at the moment because I want that credit card to be cut up and disposed of. So although that is really a personal quote, it's also work related when it comes to money and things. Might have gone off on a bit of a tangent. But anyway, he's got a Dave Ramsey podcast and he has does these baby steps. So if you're interested in getting on top of your money, I would highly recommend it. Um, I listen to it every day to keep me on track and because they do this debt free screen, which is brilliant. So when people have paid off all their debts now, obviously, he's in America and people have hundreds or tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands sometimes of debt for their student loans and for their medical bills and stuff. And when you hear it, it's just like. They get out of college and they're $100,000 in debt. And you just think, oh, my God, that's just so much money to be in debt to. So um, he does a thing every hour on his show called the Debt Free Screen, where people have paid off everything except their home. And they just do three, two, one. And then they scream, we're debt free. And it's such a moving thing. So, um, yeah, go check that out. It's really good. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Number seven. I love this quote. This is another one that I use with my daughters quite a lot, but it does kind of relate to work too. And that is by Dita Von Tees. And she says, you can be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world. There's just still going to be someone who hates peaches. You're never going to be everyone's cup of tea. You're never going to be the only stylist that gets picked. You might clash with someone and there's nothing you can do. You just, you are just the peach and that's it. And I think that's really important to learn from a work point of view. But also when when you're raising teenagers, it's important to know that you're never going to be liked by everyone. And sometimes you have to just put yourself out there and not really give a crap what anyone thinks of you. 
and that is really hard so I try really hard to get on top of that because I do kind of I try not to care what people think but you kind of do especially I mean for me personally I'm really putting myself out there with my peers I'm talking to the people who could be hiring me who could ask me to do a shoot so I am very aware of that with whatever I say I try really hard not to swear on podcasts and on Instagram I swear like a trooper you would not believe how much I swear behind the scenes but I don't want people to think I'm that sort of person but I am don't tell anyone and the last quote is the quote is what's the reframe but actually that's not the quote I was looking for this is all about imposter syndrome and it's something that's come up time and time again I've had lots of questions coming to me from assistants I've had conversations with other stylists I've had conversations with writers and imposter syndrome is everywhere. I think everyone probably knows what it is, but just in case you don't, it's when you're in your workplace and you are so sure that any minute now they're going to catch you, that you you should not be in this job. You should not be, um, you should not have been booked to star this shoot. You are not good enough and they're going to catch you any minute now. It's that. And there've been studies done and it's like 70% of people feel this. Now, more women feel it than men, but men still feel it too. So, or experience it too. And I watched a, um, I I actually spoke to a life coach about this. It was something, it wasn't, I have suffered imposter syndrome. I think everyone has. But I was talking to her about something else and it came up. And she recommended this TED talk to me, which I watched at the time. And I cannot find it. I'm so frustrated. But um, the quote in that was brilliant. So I've used a different TED talk that is just as fantastic. It's Valerie Young. And she does this TED talk about imposter syndrome. It's something like 12 minutes long. I will share it in the show notes. Um, But it's all about reframing how you're seeing things. Don't think of it if you're thinking they're going to catch me any minute. I'm really rubbish at this. You have to reframe your mind of what you are, what you are putting in your head. It's your thinking that is doing that. Nobody is thinking it. Everyone's too busy thinking about themselves to be worrying about you being in your job. Unless you really screw up, your imposter syndrome is nine times out of ten completely unfounded. So in the original TED talk that I watched years ago, it was a woman who was studying something medical and she was really struggling with it. So she sought out a professor who did this TED talk and said, look, I'm really struggling with this. What can I do? And the professor turned around to her and said, there's only one thing you can do when you're suffering from imposter syndrome, and that is do your best. And that was the quote. If you do your best, You can't do any better than that. That is the most you can do. And if you do your best, it doesn't matter whether you're supposed to be there or not. You've done, you've given your all. So that was my last quote. It's all about that overcoming the imposter syndrome. But I will just leave you with one quote from Maya Angelou, who um, wrote countless books and she's um, published um, plays and poems and I mean, I looked on Wikipedia at the list of what she published and I was going to say how many. I didn't have time to sit and count it all. There was hundreds. And she was quoted as saying, I've written 11 books and each time I think, "Uh oh, they're going to find out now. I've run a good game on everybody and they're going to find me out. And she'd written 11 books. This is a perfect example. She was absolutely brilliant and she still had imposter syndrome. So that is my eight quotes. I hope they're useful. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have a quote, I'd love to know what you live by. I'm sure the moment I push stop, I'm going to think of another million quotes that I use and think about, but they just become my everyday language and I don't even notice them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. But until next week, bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylist podcast. You'll find all the details from today's show over on the show notes at InsideStylist.com. If you enjoy the show, I'd love it if you would head on over to iTunes and rate and review it. It's the best way to help other people find the show and I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, bye for now.